The following lecture by Trigueirinho, The Days of Tomorrow, with simultaneous translation into English, was recorded live in Brazil in October 2007. A vida planetária como um todo está elevando a sua polarização. Planetary life as a whole is uplifting its polarization. Planetary life is focusing on new areas of the universe and is also being influenced by areas that were not so close before. So planetary life is becoming integrated into other laws, laws that are more encompassing and more subtle. The 20th century was crucial. At the end of that century, the planet and humanity took a new turn on the spiral of evolution. We know, don't we, that evolution is like a spiral, and when we go from one turn to another, it's a critical time. And the 20th century was a time like that. So we are on a higher turn of the spiral. And in some cases, we are the same people who were living on the lower spiral. We are becoming aware that everything is changing, but we don't know how and we don't know where we are going because it is another turn of the spiral. It is a different experience. So now we need to have a new vision of the world, a new vision of life, so that we can attune to the new laws of this level where planetary life is located. Up till this time, the law of material evolution and the law of material karma have been very well known to us. These laws are very familiar to us, but on this new turn of the spiral, we are already facing the law of higher evolution and no longer just the law of material evolution. In the law of material karma, which was a law of cause and effect, we had already become used to certain mechanisms. We even had moral laws, religious laws, which were part of this cause and effect of this law of karma. But what will this law of higher evolution be like? Will it be a retributive law? Could it be that in this law we receive what we give, as we know and are used to doing? Could it be that in this other turn of the spiral we can find this material karma one gets what one gives, or is this different? What will it be like? Well, we know that the evolution of humanity is an energy process and an interchange of energies. Humanity does not evolve alone. It interchanges energies with nature, with the stars, with fellow beings, with the rest of humanity, with the kingdoms. And could it be that it will go on this way? Could things be like this in this new turn of the spiral that is beginning to appear? Horizontalmente, é isto. Well, on the horizontal level, it is this way. We interchange things. We interchange energies among all here on the surface of the planet. And this goes on. It continues on the surface, in external life, in material life. 
em vertical. And this vertical Consegue collaboration com also continues. It continues to take place with the celestial bodies, with the sun, with the planets, assim diante, with the constellations and so forth Só as we know. Nessa Except that in this verticality, espiral, in the new turn of the spiral, Outros corpos celestes também. We are also in Outros contact with other celestial bodies. Entrando em linha conosco. Other e celestial terra. bodies are aligning e with us and with the earth. Por exemplo, and we can discover, for example, um corpo celeste, that besides a new celestial body, satélites, there may also be satellites. Um mundos There may also be worlds, artificial planets. And the star Orion, for example. The star Orion is very mysterious to us. We know little about the star Orion, about what comes from the star Orion. But could it be that this star Orion is simply a star, or could it be that it is the external part, or that it represents or that it is the physical form in the sky of e some extraplanetary Orion, action. Exemplo, and in the case of Orion, for example, there is this extraplanetary conjuncture which it represents and which safeguards the plan of evolution for the Earth. Espiral, so that we, who are on this new turn of the spiral, may be psychically equipped as souls or as spirits, so that we may be outfitted to participate in these, what we can call commandments, participate in these extraplanetary conjunctures. Orion, for example, as a star which harbors the energy of this commandant. It aids the transport of our monads or our spirits to other systems. That is, if our spirits or our monads are in need of wider expansion, an expansion which the Earth does not provide, because the Earth's planet has its limits like all planets. And some spirits or some monads might be needing a broader expansion. So Orion, or this extraplanetary system that works there, is able to guide entire peoples to other systems. Now, we are not talking about physical bodies, obviously. We are talking about the essence of these people. We are talking about the essence of these beings, the soul or the monad, the spirit of these beings. So we are consciously living unprecedented times, and this is our vertical action. It is what we should be getting to know. It is what we should be contacting vertically. We know about the existence of the Alpha space vessel, which even has representative energies on the Earth. We know about the existence of composites we call Alpha and Omega, which stimulate the integration of humanity into the cosmos, vertical activities, which gradually become clearer to us, especially inwardly. But it is not only horizontally and vertically that our actions are carried out today, whether consciously or unconsciously. They are also carried out in depth 
ver a coisa horizontal, it is clearer for us to see things on the horizontal level, the way we do here on the surface, on the physical level, on the conscious level. We see things vertically when it's a case of stars, of constellations, of space vessels, or of other conjunctures in the sky. And we must also consider this in depth because there is a difference. In depth refers to our relationship which tends to become conscious, which tends to enter our system of communication with worlds and with other dimensions, with civilizations that are in other dimensions, perhaps parallel to this one, or in worlds that are on other levels of matter, on more subtle levels of matter, or in worlds that are in non-material levels, that are not material. And this is what we call our in-depth relationship. So humans today have all these possibilities and life would be really retrograde if we were to limit ourselves to this horizontal relationship, if we were to limit ourselves to acting, collaborating with what is evident, with what is visible to our senses, because there is also the vertical relationship which is open to our inner selves and there is this in-depth relationship. However, the vertical and the in-depth relationships begin during deep sleep, during sleep without dreams. That's where they begin to take place. So many of us could not only already be preparing for this vertical life and this in-depth life besides this horizontal one, many of us could not only be preparing inwardly, unconsciously, but in certain cases we could also be living these experiences. These days that we call the days of tomorrow, this new stage, this time in our lives, on this other turn of the spiral, this will be revealed to us and will make us aware and will further our contacts with what are called the supraterrestrial worlds. Supraterrestrial does not simply indicate a material location. Supraterrestrial terrestrial denotes an evolution that is higher than the Earth's, supraterrestrial, beyond the Earth, more advanced than the Earth. And the frontiers between the spiritual and the material tend to disappear or to decrease greatly when compared with what is here today. We will be able to become consciously useful in this regard. We will be able to serve, we will be able to work, to evolve consciously in cooperation with these superterrestrial worlds. Because we receive the answers from these superterrestrial worlds. These superterrestrial worlds are in contact with us, except that it is not reciprocal. Our response is lacking. And we are being worked on in this regard during deep sleep. These contacts begin to take place during deep sleep. This 
It has to be this way for now, for the great majority, who are unconscious, because we have to learn in our innermost self how to carry out supraterrestrial contacts, but without wanting to abandon the Earth. This is not allowed. So that on the new turn of the spiral, there is no chance of running away. There is no chance of abandoning an unfinished task because our task here on Earth is far from finished. We can see the crisis the Earth is facing. So we still don't know what our role in this crisis is. We can get to know our role in this crisis insofar as we inwardly perfect our supraterrestrial contact. So our moments of deep sleep today have to be really valued. They must be meaningful to us. This current life, this external life, the structure of this civilization of the surface has cut off humanity's conscious understanding of these facts. This was present in humanity in the past, but this current life, these life structures that arose due to the requirements of the evolution of dense matter itself, and the need that we, even as spiritual beings, had to undergo trials to test our abilities. So this current life, this external life, cut us off from all those conscious contacts and the superterrestrial spheres are really manifested to us inwardly on our deepest levels. It is very important for us to be able to build an environment inwardly in our inner world in which we can be aware of these contacts because those who do not become aware of these contacts will literally begin to feel suffocated. They will begin to feel asphyxiated here, in this life on the surface, with everything that is developing, the rising temperature and everything you can see. So if our contacts are not developed consciously, we will really find it difficult to live here. What would be some and what are some of the stands that we would have to take at this time as conscious beings, as egos, as personalities, for us to begin to hear, to begin to feel, to begin to perceive something beyond this matter that is so strong and attractive, this outer life on the surface, that is far from providing us with what we are already beginning to need in this new turn of the spiral. There are three situations in which we very easily get involved and we would have to work so that these situations would no longer disturb us so that these situations would begin to be removed from us. The first is argument, controversy, hostility, this kind of antagonism that you see in all walks of life. You can see that as this crisis progresses, antagonism has crept into almost everything. So, the individuals who begin to be worked on during deep sleep 
and those who begin to be more open to other levels of reality would have to look for a way to avoid arguing, that is, to avoid causing antagonism because there's no need for this. At a certain level of consciousness, we are all united, and this antagonism belongs to levels of consciousness below the levels where there is unity. And many of us during deep sleep, during unconscious sleep, are being prepared for this unification, for this unity. And if we remember this, if we keep in mind that antagonistic confrontations are actually unreal because deep down we are all one. We are really all one. In reality, there is only the one life. So that kind of antagonism among individuals and among parts of this life represents a level of ignorance that does not measure up to this turn of the spiral, which does not measure up to the movement of this life, and something else that is quite obsolete and which we keep on living, and some people are permanently in this state, is what here on the surface of the earth is called fear. What is this fear? Practically everybody feels fear here, because if they don't, they would not be worried about the future. What does it mean to be worried about the future? What does it mean today, at this moment, to do something thinking of the future? What does this mean? It means one is afraid. One is not confident of the future. And this is generalized. It's a widespread situation. And in our deep sleep, on our unconscious level, we are being worked on in this regard. So if our unconscious perceives that this work is being done, and if our unconscious opens up to this work, much change can come about. We don't have to disincarnate and then reincarnate in another way. Certain things can happen in this same incarnation because we are already being worked on in our unconscious. This is already being organized in us. But one's consciousness, one's human ego, one's human personality has to consent for these things to emerge from the depths and begin to be activated here. Because if these things that already exist on deeper levels and that are beginning to be built in our deep inner world do not emerge here, we will not be able to face the development of this crisis of the planet physically, psychologically, psychically, and mentally. You know that once in a while scientists make some announcement very discreetly, don't they? They are saying that in 10 years' time, 12 years' time, things are going to be unbearable. Things are already unbearable. However, our body or our bodies have a great capacity to adapt. But this capacity that the bodies have to adapt has its limits. So soon, they will not be able to adapt any longer. If we have not made a decisive contact, if we have not chosen to make this contact on a deep level, in depth, if we have not chosen to do this, we are not going to have the strength, we are not going to have the discernment, and we are not going to have the instructions from our deep level on how to hold on here for as long as we are meant to stay on here. 
It could also be that we are not meant to stay on here. We may have to go on to the astral level. By disincarnating, we go to the astral level. But these instructions which we receive from our unconscious are also valid for the astral level and for the mental level too, which is another level where we will become conscious when we leave the physical body. And if we are not totally determined to seek our in-depth nucleus, we are not going to get rid of fear, and fear usually tends to grow. If we do not go within, if we do not go to our deep cores to seek security, to seek light, to seek signs, to seek guidance there, we are going to be very much afraid. And of course, a heart attack is not going to resolve anything, because when one has a heart attack, one goes to the astral level. One goes on living on the other side, and there one continues to feel the same anguish because it is one's astral body that goes there, and it is one's astral body that is anguished, not one's physical body. One's physical body remained behind, and one feels the anguish over there outside of the body. So it's high time we worked to unify these levels, that we made a choice to be working not only horizontally here or vertically, but also in depth. And besides resolving this issue of argument, because argument and antagonism hinder us from contacting the inner levels, argument, antagonism, disagreement, these reinforce our situation in the external superficial part of life, whereas this is exactly the opposite of what we should be doing at a time when we are meant to be going in depth. And fear is a lack of contact with this unconscious nucleus of ours, with this inner nucleus of ours. And another point which is quite generalized and which we would have to work on in these times besides argumentation and fear is prejudice. So prejudice is when we form an idea of something before really getting to know it. Prejudice, this tendency that we have to reject, this tendency that we have to classify, to define something that we do not know inwardly, because we can only be prejudiced in regard to something when we don't know that thing. Because as soon as we really know something, Prejudice is dissolved. Prejudice means that one does not know that thing from which one wants to be set apart, against which one is reacting. So this prejudice is ignorance, because if we know something, we have no more prejudice. Life is one. We are prejudiced because we set ourselves apart from it, because we didn't understand it, we didn't see it properly, we didn't really perceive it, and we are looking at it superficially. We see it superficially. This is why we are prejudiced. So we have to resolve these three issues. And how do we resolve these three issues? We have to seek within ourselves that which is available for us to resolve these three issues. And we have three things inside of us for this. We have these available within ourselves, but we have to seek them. We have to recognize them and take them up. The first thing is love. Love, this sentiment which is buried, embedded, entombed within humans, this thing, this deep unification, this inner union, 
This our union, this unification with ourselves, this love in itself. But love itself does not mean a mask. It is not love for personality, not for the ego, but love for the essence. So if we really love our essence, love begins to develop in us because our essence responds. And when our essence begins to respond, we begin to love. We finally begin to love. Because what people of the surface call love, you know well what it is. Because you live it, you have lived it, and you already know what it's all about. Now, when this essence begins to love its own self, then it emanates an energy which at a certain level becomes transformed into a sentiment that reaches out to others. And this love is something that we have inside that is accessible to us. This love is intrinsic to us. We are love. But we who live on the surface of life and of things have to discover this. We have to eventually come to this. And something else that we also have inside of us and that we have to take upon ourselves is courage. Courage. We have courage because we have a spirit. We have courage because we are a monad. The Greeks used to call it a monad. We in the West call it spirit. So because we are a monad, we are a spirit on the cosmic level. We are this. And we are kind of expatriated from there. We are somewhat eluded by the levels of consciousness below this cosmic level where we are. And it is on this level, on this level of the monad, on this cosmic level, where we are a spirit, it is there that we are courage itself. So this in-depth movement is also very important for us to begin to find this love, this courage in us. And the third aspect that we would have to find within ourselves is readiness. We do have readiness. We have readiness because as essences, we do not sleep, we do not rest, we have no need for recreation, we are not lazy, we have no illnesses in our essence. So there we are in readiness. There we are ready. There we are on standby. When a signal reaches there, when there is a call, when there is a stimulus, readiness responds. We are this. Now, if we don't equilibrate our lives, besides being on the horizontal level and besides being only on the vertical level, if we don't go in depth, we will not have access to these three elements, love, courage, and readiness, to deal with prejudice, fear, and argument. And as we are drawn into all these things, what is supraterrestrial remains very far away, because these things, these doings of terrestrial humanity of the surface, these normal everyday things of ours, these things are like a cloud of dust. See, everything that happens outside of us is really a symbol of something inner. If you look out into space these days, you will see a cloud of dust. You've noticed it, haven't you? You've noticed that space is dirty, space is polluted. And it's not only a pollution that comes from fuel emission. It's a psychic pollution. It is an emotional pollution and mental as well. This is a total pollution. And you see this when you look up. When you look up, you see the reflection of this. You see the materialization of this pollution. 
And this stands between your awakened consciousness and this reality that is there, the reality of the days of tomorrow, which are already before us, already here, because life has already taken another turn on the spiral. So it is already all here. We are the ones who have to unblock ourselves to be able to begin to see this. It's time for us to deal with a very elementary topic, perhaps too elementary for this audience, but it's worthwhile cautioning. The topic is vanity. Vanity is what makes us think that we don't have to know something. Vanity is what makes us think we know everything. Or vanity, the deeper vanity, is what makes us think that we already know something. Since we all think that we know something, at least one thing, we are all vain. So vanity is not just to tint one's hair or whatever. It's not only that. Vanity is to think that we know something. How can we know anything if life is in continual movement? And as soon as we have learned what has just happened, we no longer know it because life is already at the next moment. This cannot be called speed. This is an inner flow that we must follow. As soon as we have observed and perceived something, as soon as we have noticed the present, right away it is no longer that way because life has gone on. Life has continued. So a vain person is the one who sees something at one moment and therefore thinks he is still seeing it. But the person is seeing something that has passed because it is no longer that way. So this vanity can only be healed if we become simpler. And for us to become simpler, we have to begin on the physical level from the most obvious things to the occult things, the things we don't know. It's worthwhile talking about these things because we are being pressured pressured by the stellar brotherhood, we are already receiving pressure from stars, undergoing certain alterations. We human beings, human monads or human souls are not the only ones being summoned to live the days of tomorrow. The entire universe is in this movement. The entire universe is journeying. And even the stars, which for us are a reference of perfection, our stars are also changing. They are also evolving. And in this evolution, some planets are also approaching us, bringing energies that did not reach us before. And some planets that are not physical some astral planets or some non-material planets because there are non-material planets which astronomers will never see and it's not because they cannot be seen but they cannot be seen with material eyes with material equipment one has to look deeper to see them one has to be working on a deeper level to become aware of these higher brothers that are already working working on us. They are already working on the earth. And the rays of these unknown planets, the rays of these planets that have not yet 
been seen or that will really not get to be seen. And these rays are penetrating our atmosphere. And these rays that penetrate our atmosphere and other emanations from the non-physical sun, the spiritual sun, it, it is these emanations that are maintaining life on the planet. Of course, life on the planet is also life, and the life of the planet responds to all of this, and all of this is sustaining life on the planet. It is very important for us to cultivate our deep sleep, for us to cultivate our hours of sleep without dreams. And when we awaken from this sleep without dreams, without images, without messages, when we return from this deep level, it is important for us to make an act of thanksgiving to our own innermost depths. When we awaken from this kind of sleep, we should return differently. We should have a different awakening. We should awaken in a way that is relevant to this stage of our evolution. So if we become aware that we are alive, because deep, supraconscious and unconscious life in us are keeping us here. We are still on Earth, aren't we? At least up to now. So, as soon as we come out of this blessed sleep, as soon as we are aware of ourselves, we should turn to our inner self with gratitude with Muitos gratitude. Many will say, I have nothing for which to be grateful seeing what my life is like and I can't see how to resolve my problems so I have nothing to be grateful for. Today you have to turn your life inside out because on the outside life is the way you can all see. You have to go inward. You have to go deep within and be grateful and make an act of gratitude. If you make this act of gratitude, but not just formally, a true act of gratitude, a real act of gratitude, a turning inward and really becoming united with what is going on inside there. This is gratitude. It is not cutting yourself off from your own reality. And in deep sleep, without dreams, you are being prepared to recognize your own reality. Nothing outside here will take you to this. On the contrary, external life of this civilization takes us to the other side, the opposite. It's the opposite of what normal human life makes us do. But then after the sleep, our first act is to be grateful inside, to be, to be grateful for being alive. And then something begins to emerge. On some level of our being, it becomes possible for us to begin to perceive, on some level of ours, the supraterrestrial levels, superterrestrial life, the supraterrestrial brothers. This is a way for us to begin to perceive and get in touch with this. And it's not always on very abstract levels. Sometimes this entire superterrestrial life is on levels very close to us. For example, Galileo Galilei, that is, the one we used to call Galileo Galilei, because today he has no name. Where he is, he's nameless. Galileo Galileo is just a point of reference for us. So today, the one we used to call Galileo Galilei is dedicated to a task because this was always his work even before becoming incarnated as Galileo. So today, he is dedicated 
to disclosing a celestial body that is concealed by the planet Venus. And of course, this work does not take place on the physical level because Galileo is not incarnated. This work is carried out on the astral level. This work is being carried out on the level of life that comes right after our conscious physical level. So this work, this contact with this new celestial body, something new for us, which is concealed by the brilliance of Venus, which is screened by the light of Venus from the region of this new celestial body, from this new thing that we don't know yet, will come the ray to our heart area that will build our right side heart area center, which is our new heart area that is not on the physical body. You all know about the right side consciousness. You all know about the development of the right side consciousness. Consciously or unconsciously, you are working towards this. So in the right side heart area, Today, this corresponds to the etheric area, which is not really within the physical body, but which is on our etheric level to the right. This which is coming from this occult side of space is creating, is developing our right side consciousness. It is also reaching and stimulating our spinal cord so that we can develop several smaller energy centers that are still undeveloped and are not even developed in our etheric body. So, through these rays on our spinal cord, Work is being done on our smaller centers that are undeveloped and unknown, and planetary rays are coming from another planet and are affecting our astral body. This being, this member of the hierarchy, is developing this in these days of tomorrow that have already begun, that are already here. So there are thoughts in the universe there are thoughts created by great consciousnesses. There are thought forms that are absorbed by our spirit. There are thought forms in the cosmos that do not reach our human minds. These thought forms reach our spirit, and it is our spirit, it is our monad, that absorbs this new thought or these new thought forms. And and these new thought forms that are coming from the cosmos are the forms for tomorrow, for our tomorrow, because they are quite ancient in the cosmos. So it seems that these thought forms that are being absorbed are not going to be manifested on the earthly level because the earthly level has to work on other things. The earthly material level is going to need an intense purification. It's going to need a detailed and profound purification. So there is no way that a new thought Tomorrow's thought can become implanted in this earthly matter because the earth first has to be purified and the purification is coming. We can see what is happening with waters and with fire also. We can see what is going on in this regard. So these thoughts then are not applicable in the current earth. There would be no response from anything or anyone because there is still the need for purification. But these forms do exist. These forms are being brought to our spirit 
to our monad. These forms are impregnating our deepest self. So we are being prepared to participate in all of this. And a member of the hierarchy that we know by name because at one time she was known internationally, Helena Rorick, this Helena Rorick lived the days of tomorrow in the same way that we are living the days of today, but not as badly as we are doing. She really lived the days of tomorrow. And she used to talk about a country called Auckland. And she used to say that it was a place no one knew. Many of us, as spirits, as monads, are into these things. Many of us are either getting ready or we are already entering these things. And today, more than ever, we should not remain exiled in this horizontal world because this really is an exile without the vertical world and without the in-depth world. To talk about the horizontal world and to talk about the vertical world is nothing new to you. But to talk about the in-depth world, the inner world, is something completely new because we only really know this when we get there. Because one can have descriptions of surface life and one can have descriptions of vertical life. Isn't it so? There are even cameras filming what happens here and there in the vertical world. But there is no equipment that can reach the in-depth, the inward direction. This does not respond to CAT scanners. So nothing reaches there. And no matter how hard they try, no one can describe this to you. Because each one must get there on his own. As each one gets there, he or she begins to know it. Because if someone tries to talk about this, to describe this, if someone tries to analyze this, it can cause a shock because these are vibrations. They are thoughts. They are levels of consciousness. They are energies that can burn, to use a familiar word, they can burn. So in order not to burn or not to disintegrate our screens, our etheric, astral and mental screens, we really have to get there by ourselves. We ourselves have to go there. And today our inner need to go in depth is so real that even if someone were to describe it, it would be of no use because that which is in the depths of the self is only of use when we begin to experience it. Otherwise, it simply remains a theory. It might change our mind a little, but our mental body stays the same. Our life stays the same. We stay the same. We are not transformed. We receive some information imprinted on our brain, and that's it. But this does not happen when we go in depth, when we seek what is in depth. There, where we are going to be, where we already are in a certain sense. And we are going to be there in our present consciousness. We are going to be there fully, no matter what happens out here. Anything can happen out here. Those who are concerned with going inward, those who are concerned with deepening their own reality, see what is happening out here like a mirage, one of those mirages one sees in the desert or like a film being projected on a screen. So let us think about the present moment to see where we are 
and Nos where we stand in the days of Obrigado. tomorrow that are already here. Thank you very much.